it's that time of year where the canola is starting to kind of wake up a little bit across the state. And Josh, how, how does canola look across the state right now? Well, for the most part, it's been holding in there throughout the winter. It's starting to come out of dormancy, like you said. Uh, some of our first time growers that maybe grew canola for the first time last year, uh, or we had a very mild winter last year, are kind of surprised this year on how much uh, foliage they lost and a bunch of leaves got froze back. So a little bit sh shocked at first, but uh, once they learned that most of the plants still survive the winter and starting to grow new leaves, they're a lot more assured that they have a good stand out there. So most of the places across the state have been able to get a rain here or there, able to keep the crop uh, growing. But most of the time during the winter, uh, the plant survives off of its roots. So as long as they had a decent plant going into winter, they still have a fairly good stand coming out of the winter. So like I said, for the most part across the state, most of the canola crops are still looking fairly well. Okay, so what, what should producers start thinking about, you know, moving forward from here? Moving forward from here in the spring, uh, just like going into the fall, they gotta get out and scout for pests. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't have any bugs or weeds. Uh, in this instance, we need to be on top of our spraying. We got quite a bit of hen bit here. So mm -hmm. get out, scout your fields, see if you need to go across with the herbicide. Make sure if you're going across with the herbicide, uh, check really hard for insects to see if you're getting close to those thresholds and if you can put the insecticide with the roundup or the herbicides mm -hmm. kind of assess your stands kind of figure out what kind of yield potential you might be looking at and try to adjust your rates from there okay and and, and we're actually in a, in a part of state that you really don't think about canola we're up here in Ottawa County up up in northeast Oklahoma you're you're starting to do some uh, different trials up here Yes, through funding through the Oklahoma Oilseed Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, we have variety demonstration plots all across Oklahoma. Uh, this location is near uh, Miami, mm -hmm. and so we have stuff from the northeast corner of the state here all the way down to Altus, so in the southwest part of the state. So we kind of spread them out this year. We have about a dozen locations across the state. Some of them are faring a little bit better than others, uh, but this one they've got enough moisture and most of the time or most of this crop looks fairly well as long as we had a good stand going into winter okay now let's let's take a look at this um different application rates for uh for for different things here of all the about 12 of the locations for the oklahoma oil seed commission all of them will have at least eight to ten canola varieties mm -hmm. and uh so the farmers can get out and look at the different varieties throughout the growing season and can right. compare them so and then in addition to the varieties, we also, depending on the location, some of them we used uh, different fertility treatments right. where we put different uh, in furrow uh, fertilizer rates with the seed. Uh, one of the issues we've had is putting too much of fertilizer with the seed at planting and we had some salting out issues that thinned out the stand some. Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to quantify uh, what kind of rates we should be looking at for our winter canola growers, but somewhere between zero to 30 pounds, we're able to see more benefits than stand thinning. Uh, a lot of the times we'll have a little bit more vigorous plant, a bigger, healthier plant with a little bit of fertilizer. Like I said, too much is a bad thing with the fertilizer with the canola seed. So we're showing some different things at different locations and what kind of fits that area and what some guys are wanting to look at. So. And actually there's a educational uh, opportunity coming up for canola growers. Yes, uh, through the help of the Great Plains Canola Association, they're offering kind of a premier educational program for canola producers in the southern Great Plains, trying to bring in producers from Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. In the Enid on uh, March 28th, they're at the Fairgrounds Pavilion. They're in Garfield County at Enid, Oklahoma. So Canola College is the name of the event. Uh, be sure to get online. Uh, we have online registration on the OSU Canola website. Uh, canola.okstate.edu. Okay, thank you much, Josh, and we'll put a link to that on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.